today's video, I will show you how to program the Node MCU inside the LED controller with my version of the Arduino code. Now, I have had some problems programming the Node MCU while it's connected to the breakout board. So, the best thing to do is take it apart, disconnect the Node MCU, and then plug it into the USB port of your computer. And once I have the Node MCU plugged into my computer, I will open up the project file. I will have a link to my GitHub repository in the description below. The project file is a fork of Brown Animations code with my additions to it, including several new effects and some code to disable interrupt, which was causing problems for my series of WS2812 LED strips. So before I load the code onto the Node MCU, there are several things we're going to need to configure. First, you want to make sure you have Node MCU 0.9 selected, or 1.0 in case you're using that version of the board. Next, I find that using the 160MHz CPU frequency helps avoid some flickering issues as well. And finally, you want to make sure that the right COM port is selected for your board. The first setting you need to change is the Wi-Fi SSID. This is the name of the Wi-Fi network you will be connecting your sensor to. You also want to type in the password for your Wi-Fi network here. The Mosquito server is the IP address or the host name of the computer where you're going to be running your Mosquito broker. In my case, this is the host name of the Raspberry Pi on which my OpenHab instance runs. Sensor name is the unique ID for your LED strip. As an example, I'm using Office Window. This is how I will identify this strip in OpenHab and when I send commands to it. The next three options are your Mosquito topics. The first two are for your individual LED strip. The state topic is the topic to which the Node MCU controller will publish the current state of the LED strip, such as power, brightness, color, and the currently selected effect. The set topic is where you're going to be publishing commands to your Node MCU controller. This is how you select individual effects for individual LED strips. The third topic is something I added which is a group topic. In my case, I have decided to group all my Windows strips together into one mosquito topic, so that when I send the command to that topic, all of the Windows strips change at once. I have found that this works a lot more reliably once you start having a larger number of controllers on the network. Next, you want to set the number of LED pixels in your strip. This is important for animation effects. In case you're using a different type of an LED, for example the WS2811 strip, you would change the name of that chipset here. Finally, if you find that you set your LED strip to a red color and it shows up green instead, you need to play around with this setting here. This is the order of colors that are sent to the LEDs by the controller. So if green and red are swapped, you will have to swap the letters G and R here. Okay, once all these settings are completed, you just hit upload. And once it finishes uploading, you can disconnect the Node MCU from the computer, put it back on its carrier board, and put the sensor back together. Now I'll just plug the LED strip back into it and connect power. You'll notice that the first LED lights up while the Node MCU controller is connecting to the Wi-Fi network. Once the connection is completed, the LED will go dark. Now the controller is ready to accept commands. In the next video, I'll show you how to set up OpenHub to send commands to this LED strip. If you like my video and want to be notified when I make more, just hit subscribe here. And if you want to find out more about the Node MCU breakout PCB I designed, watch this video here.